prologue. It is said that the town of Ogaki in Mino province was given its name, which means Great Wall, following the erection of a massive stone rampart. This wall was later incorporated into the castle of the ruling Daimyo to protect it from the floods that were quite numerous in the area due to the presence of the Kiso, Nagara, and Ibi rivers. In the fourth year of the Horeki period, which is to say 175 to 4, or about 10 years before the events of our story, the Shimazu family, lords of Satsuma province in Kyushu to the south, had been directed by the shogunate to carry out difficult flood control work on the river embankments below Ogaki. Before the work was completed, however, the original budget of some 30 million Rio had multiplied nine times, and the hazardous work itself had left more than 30 of the clan's samurai vessels, the Hanshi, either dead or wounded. Yukihirata, Avero, or principal retainer, of the Shimazu clan, and 45 of his samurai subordinates acknowledged their responsibility for the extraordinary cost overrun and loss of life. Their suicides were an unprecedented tragedy. Although flood disasters decreased considerably after this project's completion, the Ogaki area was not yet entirely safe, and when it rained more heavily and longer than usual, the town flooded near the upper reaches of the Satsuma construction area. Even washouts of the great castle walls were not unusual. The town expended quite a large sum each year on river improvement, and the chief vassals from Ogaki took turns managing the work. Over the years stories of these chief vassals' mismanagement and political corruption began to circulate. Inspection of the construction site was not duly carried out, and the construction budget constantly increased. The rise in property taxes to make up this sum finally brought many people to question the wisdom of allocating any more funds for this project. The daimyo, Lord Toda, required by the Tokugawa shogunate to spend most of his time in the distant capital of Edo, appointed Tonari Otaka as Kunigero, the chief vassal who would rule over the Ogaki area in his stead. Otaka was capable, talented, and possessed an extraordinary nature as rising to such a position from the rank of Humamawari, or Samurai of the Lord's Horse Guard, clearly demonstrated. Such a promotion would have been quite impossible for a man who was merely clever, smooth-talking, or skilled at winning the confidence of others. But the fairness of any system is easily destroyed when those who hold positions of authority begin to take themselves into consideration first or become motivated by power and profit. This was particularly true in Ogaki, where Tone Aereo took a ten-year grip on such an important position was in fact due to the support of the older families and other chief vassals of the clan. That certain advantages accrued to them is unquestioned, as is the fact that a cancer was spreading throughout the Ogaki government. Lord Toda, at thirty-nine, ought to have been in the full flower of manhood but he instead seemed in poor health and neglectful of clan government. His long-term as Soshiban Asterisk was undoubtedly one of the reasons for this, as was the task, assigned him by the shogunate, of informing all of the other daimyo that the new shogun, E.A. Haru, would recognize their holdings. The position of Soshibana had been a tremendous strain on body and mind, and dealing with the various lords had been both a delicate and difficult matter. Lord Toda's reward for his efforts had been the gift of a sword from Ieharu and a steadily declining state of health. Called Tokujiro as a child, Lord Toda had become the ruler of the clan at the age of seven and had taken in marriage Masa Akihata, who had borne him one son and five daughters. Only three daughters had survived to adulthood, however, and, owing to his poor health, Lord Toda was now beset by his vassals with suggestions regarding the adoption of a male heir to succeed him. To the great disgust of the people, these periods of succession had always generated struggles between new and old political factions, but in a few cases such struggles had actually led to reform of clan politics, since the adoption of an heir provided the perfect opportunity to begin the often necessary innovations in the government. Seeing the struggle through to a successful conclusion was not always an easy matter, however, and in this conservative and feudalistic age, the more forceful approach often demanded an appropriate sacrifice. Yet if the reformists, 
who could always be counted on to make some sort of move, dealt with the problem systematically, there was a greater chance of good results for the government. A clique consisting of Jackie O'Hara Inogaki and Yaz Amon Suzuki and Shingo Pori, the two chief assholes in Edo, was proceeding in just this manner. They did not rush into things hastily but carefully built up a firm foundation, sparing neither time nor trouble in the hope that they would be able to rid the clan government of its recent corruption. They assigned Goro Obtoda, no relation to the Lord, to spy on Kasho Okumura, Akaro, and placed people in all the key positions. They thus took every measure necessary to secure their success. Shinzo Kugata was in a position which made him important to this clique. It was his job, as a subordinate of the superintendents of the treasury, to handle general accounting matters, a most convenient position from which to guard against the mishandling of funds by those in power. This post had been held by the Kugata family for generations, and Tonari Otaka and his group must have felt a bit awkward in Shinzo's presence. But he was gentle and in fact looked stupidly honest. Moreover, since the parties in power did not dream of the existence of a clique preparing to fight them, they exercised little caution. Kasho Okumura had even married his beloved daughter, 